Chances are, smallpox is something you've never had to deal with before in your life. It's gone from this earth. Eradicated. Its Wikipedia article is even written in the past tense. That's how you know something is dead. We know of smallpox not from first-hand knowledge, but from historical accounts of the destruction it caused, consigned to the pages of history books and period dramas. But for millennia, that wasn't the case. Smallpox killed millions of people every year, with the highest rates of infection being among children. Aside from the 14th century plague pandemic, smallpox is one of the diseases that has most affected the course of human history. There has even been evidence of smallpox found on 3,000-year-old Egyptian mummies. Should you have contracted this disease, there was a 30% chance of death, and even for the survivors, the side effects could be lifelong. These could range from scarring all over the body to blindness to encephalitis. So what happened? Where did it go? goes, in the 1790s, an English doctor named Edward Jenner noticed that milkmaids who contracted cowpox, a much less severe and serious illness, were immune to the more severe smallpox. Jenner took a sample of cowpox from one of those milkmaids and injected it into a nine-year-old boy's arm. The boy was then exposed to smallpox several times and didn't get sick. This was the first vaccine. Before this, the only real preventative treatment for smallpox was variolation, where pus, blood, and other infected material from a smallpox patient was given to an otherwise healthy person to stimulate an immune response. Sounds lovely. But people still got sick and died from this method. Jenner ran a number of experiments before publishing a paper on his findings in 1801, on the origin of vaccine inoculation. In the paper, Jenner said that he hoped that his invention would lead to the ultimate eradication of smallpox altogether. This was decades before the germ theory of disease was even proposed, so this was pretty revolutionary stuff. This was back in the days when the solution for our common cold was being bled to death in the hopes that it would balance your humors, or whatever nonsense they believed back in the 18th century. And doctors would remove bullets by sticking their bare, unwashed fingers or unsanitized tools in the holes, and kill patients that would have otherwise survived the gunshot wounds with terrible infections. To think, maybe George Washington would have lived a little longer if his doctor didn't feel it necessary to exsanguinate him like a cow at the slaughterhouse. At least with the cow, you get a delicious hamburger from it. But what are you talking about? Oh yeah, vaccination. It did take a while for Jenner's vaccine to catch on with the Royal Society and the British public, but ultimately it did prevail, and in 1840, Parliament banned the practice of variolation in favor of vaccination with the creatively named Vaccine Act of 1840, who said politicians were creative. The Vaccination Act even provided the cowpox-based vaccine to the public free of charge. In 1853, Parliament passed another Vaccine Act that made variola vaccinations compulsory for small children, and if they failed to do so, the parents would be fine. God, I wish we had that in America these days. Nice job, Britain. You actually did good. All right, all right, no, maybe abolish the monarchy. All right, thanks. Bye, Louis. As the 19th century wore on, new innovations were made in the realm of vaccines. The next major breakthrough was in 1885 when Louis Pasteur invented the rabies vaccine. You may have heard of him. He's the namesake for the process of pasteurization, which is the reason why you haven't gotten any raging E. coli infections from the milk in your cereal yet. Rabies is the deadliest disease known to humanity having a case fatality rate of almost 100%. To this day, less than a dozen people have ever been known to survive a rabies infection when symptoms begin to set in. Once your symptoms set in, say goodbye, it's like that. Pasteur tried his vaccine on a nine-year-old boy who was mauled by a rabid dog, and amazingly, the boy was completely fine. He didn't get rabies. Louis Pasteur is often considered one of the pioneers of modern epidemiology and medicine. His discoveries led to the modern idea of germ theory, that disease are caused by microscopic infectious agents like bacteria, viruses, and fungi, and not the prevailing ideas of the four humors of demonic possession or infidelity. People were just so stupid back in the day. It's absolutely remarkable that we made it as far as a species. To be fair, there are still people like that. But at least they're not the world's leading medical experts and scientists. 
Imagine if Anthony Fauci came out oh, on stage during one of Biden's press conferences and started talking about using bloodletting to cure COVID-19. That would be madness. At least in these days, the stupid is mostly confined to Republicans, evangelical Christians, and white people who think that being, being asked to wear a mask inside Walmart is somehow tantamount to the hundreds of views of systemic oppression that black people have experienced in this country. Now that I think about it, there's significant overlap in these groups. The 20th century is really when the whole practice of vaccination hit its stride. That store laid the groundwork for a revolution in vaccines. Vaccines for common deadly diseases were developed like measles, mumps, rubella, tetanus, whooping cough, polio, and completely revolutionized how we fought diseases. Enter the World Health Organization, which starting in the 1950s embarked on a campaign to eradicate smallpox from the planet. Not an easy task. As late as the mid 20th century, smallpox still regularly caused outbreaks all over the world particularly in South America, Asia, and Africa. The early years of the eradication program were marked by consistent roadblocks and shortages of vaccine supply. Even before the global eradication campaign started, aggressive vaccination programs had already eradicated smallpox from North America in 1952 and Europe in 1953. In 1967, the World Health Organization reinvigorated and intensified its efforts to destroy smallpox once and for all. The next 10 years would be one of the greatest public health success stories in the history of humanity. In 1977, the last naturally occurring case of smallpox was confirmed in Somalia. The patient was a hospital cook named Ali Mao Malin. Malin made a full recovery and would ultimately become involved with the international campaign to eradicate polio before dying of malaria in 2013. While there were a couple isolated incidents to smallpox infections in the following years, such as a British medical student contracting it in a lab sitting in 1978, on May 8, 1980, the World Health Assembly declared smallpox eradicated from the earth, and 157 years after his death, Edward Jenner's hope that his invention would lead to smallpox's complete destruction finally came to pass. It is the present. It has been over a year since the COVID-19 pandemic turned the entire world upside down. But the end is in sight, and vaccines from Pfizer, Moderna, and J&J &J are now being rolled out all over the world with millions of doses having already been given out. The incredible timeline of this vaccine's development is a testament to how far medical technology has come in the past few decades. It took less than a year for several safe and effective vaccines to be approved for usage in the general population. Before this, the previous record for vaccine development was the mumps vaccine, which took over four years to be developed from start to finish. Now this just begs the question, will I get the COVID-19 vaccine? The answer is yes, absolutely. Let me make it clear for everybody out there. All of the COVID-19 vaccines available are incredibly safe and effective. Vaccines are one of the most highly regulated and tested things we could put in our bodies. But in spite of all the scientific evidence saying that these vaccines are absolutely safe and effective, the amount of misinformation I see spreading online is absolutely disheartening. And what I suggest to all the kids who I've seen dueling in the bathrooms at school before when that was still a thing. If you don't have any issues putting that stuff in your body, you shouldn't be afraid of what's in the vaccine. Let's just be honest here. First off, I would like to state that nobody has died as a result of getting the COVID-19 vaccine. There have been a number of people who have died shortly after getting their vaccines, but autopsies, medical records, and death certificates all show that the causes of death were unrelated to the vaccination itself and was merely an unfortunate coincidence. The reason why news outlets play up these incidents for the sake of headlines is that it capitalizes on the reader's own fear and cognitive biases. Here's a lesson for you all. The media is not your friend. The media cares about making money, and they make money by catching your eyes and getting clicks. Always, always, always scrutinize everything you read and always check sources when somebody's making a claim you find dubious. That's why I link all my sources for these videos down in the description. Most of the COVID-19 vaccines available are of a completely new variety of vaccine, an mRNA vaccine. If you've ever taken a high school biology class, you should hopefully know other than that mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. The RNA is a nucleic acid similar to DNA that is used for transporting and encoding information within a cell. 
mRNA is a type of RNA that is responsible for transporting information from your DNA to the places in your cells that create the protein. I actually don't know what the name of the place in the cells where the protein synthesis is called. I forgot that as soon as we did the test. Traditional vaccines involve injecting a weakened form of a virus or bacterium into a patient to train their immune system on how to fight off an infectious invader. So when the real deal comes around, their body already knows how to fight it and they won't get sick. But with an mRNA vaccine, it gives your body the instructions to make specific proteins from the virus on its own, so your immune cells can educate themselves on how to fight it off without any need for any actual virus particles. The protein in question for COVID-19 is the spike proteins on the outer envelope of the virus that allows it to enter your cells. The mRNA allows your immune cells to produce their own copies of the spike protein so it can educate the immune system on how to properly fight off COVID-19. You also cannot get COVID-19 from the vaccine because there is no actual COVID-19 virus in it, just the mRNA. mRNA vaccines have many advantages over traditional vaccines. While it is relatively difficult and time-consuming to culture enough of a pathogen in order to weaken it to make the vaccine, and when there's a major pandemic going on, time is of the utmost importance. But mRNA can be made rather easily in lab settings. Because of the nature of the mRNA vaccine, as soon as the genome of the SARS-CoV-2 virus was sequenced and released online, scientists were able to start work on the vaccine almost immediately. It took only about 11 months to be made, down from the previous record for vaccine development at 4 years. The sooner you can release a vaccine to the public, the more lives will be saved. It wasn't easy to figure out how to develop the mRNA vaccine though. It took decades of research by the world's top medical experts. First off, they have to figure out how to make it so the mRNA doesn't cause a violent immune response and kill the patient, because that's typically not what vaccines are supposed to do. But I mean you can't get COVID if you're dead, so it does work on the prevention factor. Then they had to figure out how to make the immune cells respond to the mRNA and make them produce the proteins that the mRNA codes for. It was a daunting task, but by the time COVID came knocking, they were ready. And now this mRNA vaccine technology is already being used to develop vaccines for diseases like Ebola and Zika. Remember when that was a big deal? I, I'll say. Some babies with small heads pales in comparison to 500,000 Americans dead. Perhaps one day, a universal flu vaccine could be made like this, and that would be amazing. A fair bit of warning though, the COVID-19 vaccine can cause some mild to moderate side effects in a small percentage of patients. Nothing too serious or at all life-threatening, but it can be a tad wacky at times, some light flu-like symptoms, stuff like that. For me, that's a typical Tuesday during spring allergy season, but I'm aware not everybody is used to that like I am. But that's actually a good sign, and if your body produces an immune response, it is a sign that the vaccine is actually working. And this is not unique to the COVID-19 vaccine either. Most other vaccines have the same risk of similar side effects. This isn't something entirely novel. In some cases, people can go into anaphylactic shock, but these incidents are exceedingly rare and the people providing the vaccine are oftentimes prepared to deal with it should it happen. After looking at all the evidence, I have every reason to believe that the COVID-19 vaccine is safe, and I am eagerly anticipating the day where I myself can get in line and get the jab in the arm. Vaccine hesitancy is an increasingly dangerous problem, especially here in America. Measles, a disease that was once considered eradicated in the United States, has now made a resurgence, in no small part due to a growing movement of vaccine skeptics and misinformation spread online. Now at this critical moment in this pandemic, we have one chance to make sure COVID is a thing of the past. It is your moral obligation to all society to get vaccinated when you are able. It is the only way to get our lives back and create a societal herd immunity to protect those like cancer patients, the young, and those who are otherwise immunocompromised from getting sick themselves. Lastly, if you do not get the vaccine, you are creating a future where COVID becomes endemic, circulating and mutating in the human population forever, and could possibly cause another pandemic in the future. So please, roll up your sleeve and get the shot. I know that's what I'll be doing. In the meantime, remember to wash your hands. Keep your distance and wear a mask. Just stick it out a little longer. We got this. Thanks for watching.